I'm Bridget Bardot, for all you know, your girl behind the counter, and we are finally done with Andre Tarkovsky Reek. Hooray! We can all get to something a little more fun. Oh my god, this has actually low-key been, like, so much research, and, like, it's, it's honestly, uh, like, I love doing this, and I will have to, I, I will say it's a challenge, and it's stretched me so much creatively, and, like, it's made me have to, like, bring out, like, so much, like, weird fucking knowledge, and I, I also love Andre Tarkovsky, so I hope I've been doing him a good job. He's been dead for, like, a number of years, but I hope I'm doing a good job with explaining his work and explaining why it's relevant and important and at least where to start with Art House. Anyways, discussing the plot, we have a plot this time! <laughs> so... I kind of like dividing it into two sections, the researcher and the um, translator. The researcher being the male, the translator being the woman. So, a researcher goes to Italy to go and do research on a composer named Andrzej Sosnowski. While he's going and doing that and trying to learn a little bit more about Sosnowski's life, his translator, they his translator and him kind of hang out around the Italian countryside and eventually they wind up going to a church of the Madonna. While there, she witnesses some women praying to Madonna and one of the most beautiful imagery images in the entirety of nostalgia, my favorite, <laughs> which we'll talk about later. <clears throat> they go to their hotel room, they discuss some things, they go to their bedroom. The translator tells the poet, I love you, I've fallen for you, you're the best. <laughs> White bread McGee. I, I do have to say, like, th this guy is like the most, I, I don't understand, I think she can do better, <laughs> personally. <laughs> um, so, he's like, cool, new phone, who this, not interested. And they go and they try and find this guy named Domenico, who, tried to lock his wife and kids up inside a house because he thought it was the end of the world and he didn't let them out for a long time and eventually when he let them out of crack they all ran out and left him. So meanwhile Domenico has been living in this town and eventually he the researcher says like hey I want to meet this guy. So the translator goes down tries to go and get this guy to talk to him and Domenico says fuck off translator and then the, and then the researcher goes yeah, fuck off, translator. You're a bad translator. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm leaving. And then she leaves. So he goes back to the house with the tran with the um, guy named Domenico. They talk for a little bit. He agrees. Okay, I will prevent the end of the world for you. Prevent the end of the world for you by going and walking this candle across this pool. Ergo, and making sure it doesn't go out. Ergo, preventing the end of the world. Domenico's like, Great, I can die happy. Bye. <laughs> so, the guy decides, screw that, I'm going back to Italy. I'm going home. Miss home. So, the translator goes and calls him up later, and she's like, look, I have a hot new boyfriend. Also, <laughs> this, uh, also Domenico's wondering if he did the thing that you promised to do. And he's like, yeah, sure I did. And goes back to go do the thing that he promised Domenico and lied about. <laughs> Meanwhile, Domenico is actually at the town square, and he has decided it is end of the world time. Says, please stop the madness. Let's all cooperate and be good people. And I'm going to make you guys be especially good people by lighting myself on fire in front of the square. <laughs> he dies in agony. It is terrifying. And then we have the granddaddy of all Tarkovsky shots. The nine-minute mega behemoth of watching some guy grab one candle and go to the other side of the pool while the candle is continually burning out. It is the most tense experience of your life. Use the bathroom beforehand because you're in for a wild ride and it lasts nine minutes and it's either going to delight you or infuriate you. And it's really going to infuriate you if you need to use the bathroom. So, I love this movie but I do actually have a bit of a problem with it so I think that a lot of time was spent on the inner life of the author and making that visible and that's really shown in the journey of the man 
there's a lot of time spent with him and a lot of detail and a lot of rich tapestries of his inner life kind of at the edges of each conversation and it's like he's lived a full life that is rich and doesn't need to be entirely explained and then it feels with the women that he dropped the ball so this is my second time watching nostalgia and in looking at it for a second time the scene that stood out to me the most was the scene with the madonna and specifically the talk she has with the priest so our translator goes hey what's everybody doing here the priest is like praying to the madonna i am by the way like the worst summarizer of this this has so much more gravitas and i'm just ruining it this is great please watch this movie <laughs> don't don't deal with my don't deal with my narration anyways so she asked the priest hey so what are these women doing they're praying to madonna what are they praying for children also if you don't believe you will ruin everything so stay away from them and she's like okay i'm a bit of a skeptic i'll stay away from them so why do you think they pray the madonna for child for children and stuff like that what do you think male priest and male priest is like i don't know women be a mystery i bet it has to do with the fact that women sure do love children and that's all they love and i was like so when's the other shoe gonna drop when are we getting back to this because she just fucks off after afterwards and you see this beautiful moment with the madonna and like the bird in the face it's beautiful it's fantastic it's beautiful but i want to hear more about the what you think women want because one of the things that actually really hit me in this retrospective is where are all the women no seriously where are all the women in tarkovsky films i mean they exist but like do they have any life related to men okay and i can hear somebody say saying what about solaris the movie that deals entirely with a woman <laughs> the entire time well it's been a while since i watched it and you're gonna have to let me know in the comments section but she's a woman created by the image of a man so she's the man's image of a woman so she's like reflected through like several male perspectives and is not even really i mean the whole thing revolves around the fact that she's not biologically this woman but just contains her in her memories and his memories of her so where are the women where is the subject of of like ladyhood like i'm cool with you not talking about women if you don't bring up women what i have a problem with is hey i want to talk about women and women just live for men and children they don't live for themselves it seems like they have no inner lives and that's kind of a weirdly fucked up perspective and that is also not slamming motherhood by the way i would like to just go and like send out a little caveat saying i am not slamming motherhood motherhood is i'm sure amazing i don't have children myself but there are a lot of moms who are like kick ass and who have been especially kick ass during this covid19 crisis so i'm not here to go and shit on motherhood and shit on moms they take on a lot of work like a lot of work but what i'm also not saying is that women don't have rich emotional inner lives and that's what it seems like when you say yeah women sure do live for childbirth and child rearing and children it kind of makes it seem like is this the only thing you think women have going on and what about the women who can't necessarily have children or who aren't interested in childbirth are you saying that either is he saying that either a they're not women or b the fact that childbirth that somebody who doesn't want children is clearly something wrong with them no but and i don't think that's the message that he's trying to portray but i think a really big criticism on tarkovsky is the fact that 
you're trying to, or at least of Tarkovsky in this film, is that he is trying to go and create a narrative about women while going and un inadvertently, I think, saying some really weird generalizations about women and about how he thinks that women are. And I'm here to say that congratulations women have complex interpersonal lives and don't just live for like one subject and also i'm saying that i love this movie i genuinely love nostalgia it's the film that i saw first of andre tarkovsky and i left there thinking that this is a perfect movie and i also left this viewing thinking that this is an amazing movie but I'm also saying if you like something, you're allowed to criticize it for something that it doesn't handle well. Especially if it's somebody who, if they're not handling sexual orientation well, or... I'm also not slamming this movie. I love nostalgia. This is the first movie I ever saw of Tchaikovsky, and it's one of my favorites. I came out of it thinking it's a masterpiece. I still think it's a ma I still think it's a masterpiece. But I'm also saying that you can be critical of a masterpiece. Even if somebody says it's an amazing masterpiece, you can't criticize it. Because you know, art is number 1 subjective and number 2 you're allowed to criticize something if it gets something of yours wrong, whether it be gender, race, sexual orientation, whatever and you're also allowed to go and see something that everybody else says is a masterpiece and call bullshit on something or even say it's bullshit i have some films that people love which i just think are not that good and you're entitled to your opinion but you're also entitled to go and you know make valid criticism and i think there needs to be more valid criticism from people who you know have lived these kind of interpersonal experiences and have overall have knowledge of them and have the relevant experience and understand how this can be received by different groups not saying that they that he did a particularly bad job it's just something that i really noticed on a second viewing and something that i really thought was like ah yikes <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> what? <laughs> but yeah, as a work, how was this received? So initially, it was highly criticized and is overall in his filmography considered kind of a lesser work, which means that not much is written about it. It's not considered like some of the seminal ones. <laughs> but that being said, I also think that it's not talked about enough. I think it's one of his strongest films and having watched a lot of his other films including now let's see we've got i've seen andre rublev the mirror um nostalgia solaris um da -da -da -da, nostalgia solaris um andre rublev the mirror uh I still need to see Yvonne's childhood. I still need to see The Sacrifice. There's one more. I think he has seven films. So I'm now about like halfway, a little bit over halfway through. And I think that this film isn't talked about enough and that it's really a shame because I think it's one of his strongest works. It's a more limited location. It creates a story. It conveys the story. It's still challenging. And also it's beautiful it's wonderful it's beautiful to look at and it makes you feel things it made me feel a lot of feelings in my heart <laughs> anyways i'm bridget fardo for all you know your girl behind the counter i hope you've enjoyed this andre tarkovsky retrospective and i hope this encourages people to like watch tarkovsky when theaters come back and maybe watch now even though there are no theaters and also to give Art House a bit of a chance, because it does get a bit of a shitty reputation. But I swear, there's, there's method to the madness. Anyways, I'm Bridget Bardot for all you know, your girl behind the counter, signing off.